You're probably thinking, my boyfriend said this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the red suit just turned that other guy into a f***ing kebab. Well, I may be super, but I'm no hero. And yeah, technically this is a murder, but some of the best love stories start with a murder. And that's exactly what this is. Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. And to tell it right, I gotta take you back long before Lou squeezed his ass into red spandex. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have a man that believes the future will be voice centered. Audio interfaces will replace screens, and we will prefer listening over reading. I think we're already there. He is the founder of listen.app and bloom.io. You're truly going to appreciate what you're going to hear today as you listen to one of the more intriguing entrepreneurs. Thrive Lab listeners, Paul Michaelenko. Paul, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Paul and I got to meet in New York City, I want to say in the summer of uh, 2019. Is that correct? I think so, right? That's when the first Yeah, time. that sounds right. That sounds right. They're in meatpacking. I wanted him. Green. Yeah, I wanted him on the podcast right away. And uh, he said, I need some time because I'm working at something really cool, really neat. And uh, I think you're going to like what it's about. And as a podcast host, as you heard in the intro, there's some pretty cool things going on. So why don't you share a little bit of your journey on how this became your focus? And we'll kick things off with that. Oh, geez. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's go back a little bit to, uh, I would even say my entire childhood passion was uh, um, around music. I started with actually playing the violin and then switched to playing the piano, then switched to studying voice. I went to school and studied voice professionally, got my undergrad in vocal performance, hmm. uh, started doing voice coaching after that. Um, actually, I found that um, many of the techniques that I learned in school and I got to study under some of the best, including like Seth Riggs, who was also teaching, you know, he taught Madonna and he was teaching Michael Jackson when I was studying <laughs> with him, like Stevie wonder and Prince. I mean, he's a legend. And, um, I realized that you could take so many of the techniques that you learn to optimize your singing voice and they, and they work kind of the same way with a speaking voice where people just uh, tend to have bad habits when they're speaking. So, um, you can fix them and you can have a good, strong speaking voice, which is a huge social advantage. Anyways, I, I did, you know, voice coaching. I launched a thing called totalbodyvoice.com, um, you know, which is still like a little side passion of mine. I really enjoy that. Um, and then, um, you know, continued school, um, long story short, ended up in tech, uh, first, um, through doing, you know, many different types. I did sales. I did, you know, managed customer support, um, ultimately found myself in product and product design and then just kind of worked my way up. Um, I, I loved everything about early startups uh, and, and the life they're in, you know, and then um, pretty soon uh, we had built a company where I became a co-founder um, that did, uh, uh, it was essentially a marketing CRM for freelancers that put all the pieces in one place. Right. Everything like, you know, your website, scheduling, um, sending invoices, Right now, you have to have like 10 different tools to do all that. This simplified it and put it in one place. It's called Bloom.io. So that was a crazy fun project that, you know, we're still running and it's, you know, it's great. People love it. Um, but around that time, I actually started a podcast um, because I just had, I don't know if people call it like withdrawals for music or something of that nature. I wanted to, <laughs> you know, stay in music, do something. And, um, and, and what I found was that uh, I would you know, listen to a, a wide variety of music. And my friends would often ask me for my music recommendations. And I, I found myself educating people in my life all the time about how to listen to music. You know, I would like take some friends to go listen to jazz. And, and, and I would quickly realize that they don't really know what to listen to. Hmm. And, and there's kind of like a, a parallel. If, if you're going to, you know, um, you know, say you're a wine connoisseur and you, and you give, you know, a high quality, you know, glass to of like Bordeaux or something. I don't know to to your friend who maybe has no idea of how to appreciate wine. Uh, they won't know what to look for, you know. And you have to kind of guide them through, like, well, you know, if you can, 
you know, feel the alcohol. That's not a good thing. You know, you want to you know, look for <laughs> these notes, et cetera, et cetera. And like, once you start educating them, then with every glass, all of a sudden the appreciation goes up dramatically. It's something similar, you know, happens with music where people just, they'll listen and they'll, they'll be just kind of this initial gut reaction of like, Oh, I like it or I don't like it. But if you can just navigate them of like, here, this is what you want to listen to. Like, you know, like listen to, to what the, you know, the, the rhythm is doing and how it's holding it and listen to how, you know, the, the, the bass or the other instruments are actually creating tension with the rhythm. And, and then you walk them through that and then let them experience it. And then it's a different experience. Anyway, so like yeah. I, I figured I'll start a podcast on that and just help people listen to music a little bit more critically and like integrate musical theory into whatever. Um, that was a lot of fun, but Oh my God, it was so much work. Like, I produced <laughs> that all myself on the weekends. But, but I do like, just want to jump in. I do like yeah. that idea because that the, the idea of um, whether you call it music appreciation or a listening appreciation to understand the complexity of the sounds, the rhythm, the beat, the specific instruments. I, I know that um, really true audiophiles are able to actually decode that in the way they listen to a lot of the things that they hear. So that's pretty cool, actually. It sounds like a good show. It could be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it was, it was, well, you know, and I think like this is something that's learnable. Like it's, it's just, you have to know what to listen for, you know, it's like, uh, like, how do you listen to voice leading? Like if you can under, appreciate that as a phenomenon, then like when you're hearing good voice leading, like you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Or like, um, you know, you want like harmonic progression, you know, so like the, the different chords and each chord has its own, you know, color set and the way that one chord leads into the next, like if there's only three chords in the song, well, there's not that many, that many colors, but when you get, you know, you know, beautiful array of chords and how they, um, I mean, eventually you have to get into music theory if you want to get complex, but there's a way to do music appreciation, you know, on a mass scale that I think, um, uh, it's just a kind of untapped. And so people end up listening to just like a few genres right. um, instead of, instead of knowing how to listen to all the different genres and, and benefiting from them. I actually have a whole thing on this that maybe someday I'll get into this. Like I, this is like a soapbox I could stand on it and, and <laughs> for a while because like <laughs> the, the thing that's important here, uh, uh, very interesting to me at least is I think um, when you listen to music, you get to train uh, your like empathy or affections. I'm not sure what the right word for it is, but like the way you feel uh, becomes nuanced because you're I, able to experience yeah. something vicariously, you know, and, um, and that's very powerful. And, and, and so it's not just these black and white feelings, but they become nuanced with these very specific colors. So, so you went from that aspect of the show and then I love the way this expression is communicated on your marketing materials. What if voice chat and podcasting had a baby? Can you share with the listeners really what the idea of what this is, is? Because I actually think that mirrors perfectly to helping people better understand maybe what they can listen to or creating communities around it. Exactly. Um, so, okay. So it kind of went like this. Um, so I had my show, it was just so much work. Um, and, and, and I'm a product designer, right? So I'm thinking about everything in, from the lens of what's the best user experience for this you know, phenomena or this product or whatever. And, and I, got, I just became obsessed with the idea of, okay, like audio is so much fun. I love podcasting. I love making podcasting. I love listening to podcasts. Uh, I became like addicted to podcast shows. And, um, and I kept thinking to myself, there's got to be a better experience of this where we can listen with other people, uh, where I can interact with other people. And I'm not just talking about like little features on an app. I'm talking about like serious innovation where, um, you know, if I'm listening to audio, I need to, you know, the input and output needs to be the same mode. So I need to be communicating using my voice um in the same way that i'm you know listening so like if you're speaking to me i want to speak back to you i don't want to like type back to you you know and um and i just became obsessed with this idea and we raised money and you know spun up a new side project at first we were just you know we had no idea what it's like to to create podcast you know tech if you will like mm -hmm. how do you source all the rss feeds how do you build that technology and it started with a side project. We built um, an app called Listen App. It's in the App Store right now. Um, that was our our first version. Is us, you know, kind of pioneering into that. I designed the whole thing, you know, from scratch myself just to save money. And um, we launched it on Product Hunt. It did really well. Uh, people loved it. We, you know, our goal was to get ten thousand users, and we got that like really fast. And and it just continues growing. 
And um, so, uh, and immediately uh, I transitioned, we raised more money and um, kind of put all my focus onto the app and we started designing, you know, the next step, which would be this, the marriage of, you know, voice chat and uh, podcasting. So, so yeah, um, let's, let's walk through this yeah. and, and we'll, let's use some real examples. So let's say someone is listening to this very episode of you and me talking about your business. How can the community of listeners on the Listen app actually utilize the app to interact or create community around this podcast? Exactly. Okay. That's a great question. So in uh, less than a month, when we release the new version, uh, here's how it's going to go. Uh, say you're on the, your app, you're listening to a podcast just like you would on any other app, but every episode has uh, this call to action on it that says start talking. And when you press on it, uh, a recording module uh, slides out from the bottom and you just hold the button and speak to your microphone or speaking to your phone or, or AirPods or whatever. And, um, and you just post whatever comment is on your mind. You know, if you have a question or a follow up, if you love that, you hated it, whatever, whatever's on your mind. Right. And what we do is actually, we match you with other listeners who also listen to that episode, who have similar interests to you. And we send your voice memo to them and start conversations. And it's actually a ton of fun because you get to meet uh, interesting people who have, who are also listening to, you know, similar podcasts and talk about the same podcast that you just listened to. So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect is you get to follow your friends on there. So if you connect with your friends on there, um, then on your profile, you can create your own audio content, like whatever comes to mind. Like you, yesterday I was just goofing around, you know, with my son and uh, on the app, we were just recording fun little things like, cause we're already playing with this internally. Actually, let me see if I can play you something like, um, this was just, it's, it's just really fun. Cause when you well, and, and, I, and I love, the, audio I love this, by the way, your, your connect it's, it makes such great sense because this is an audio platform where voice is connecting to the listeners and here yes. you're getting the listeners to connect their voice. And that exactly, is pretty powerful. Exactly. And, and the listeners aren't doing it. Down by the here we are with, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, and I just like post that on my profile. It's, it's short. It's like goofy. It's funny, but it's audio. And my friends who are connected with me on the app, you know, they'll see it in their feed. They can respond. Ha ha. Great. You know, maybe they can sing something back. You know, it's just, it adds this layer of fun and playfulness and kind of user generated content. That's, that's just, you know, accessible and Kind of like, if you will, the TikTok version of podcasting. I was just about to say, you've created the audio component of, of, of podcasting and you, you've paired it specifically and relevant to the content, which is that podcast. Now, now, now let me just ask exactly. this question. So obviously we use the example that we're talking about our particular episode right now. Mm -hmm. um, is it you're communicating on the show's platform or the specific episodes of that platform, of that podcast? Okay. Yeah. So it, it goes both ways. So um, you can, you can, you know, have your own profile where you create your own posts that have nothing to do with podcasts and connect with your friends and they could listen to your posts. And, you know, th there's a layer that's somewhat independent of podcast listening in the app. Uh, and then of course, anytime you listen to an episode, if you comment on that episode, then we match you with other listeners of that episode. So there's many Great. advantages of, you know, engaging with that. And then when you go to the show's homepage. So for example, you know, if you go to your show host homepage, you'll see there all of the comments that are being made on that show. So the community can go in and like, just listen to all the other people commenting on the different episodes. Maybe you missed episode and somebody else is commenting on it. They're like, Oh, wow, this was so great. And you're thinking, Oh, man, I need to go back and listen to that. And, so, and what's really interesting about podcasting is the people, uh, podcast consumption is different from all other forms of media in listener loyalty. Like on average, when somebody subscribes to a show, they listen to 88% of all the content. Yeah. And no, that, we, that we unlocks that too. the community. It's, like, yeah. We actually realized this a long time ago and thrive a lot and our listeners will appreciate this. And I, I know our listeners are getting excited about this because we have a lot of listeners and many of them actually want to connect with each other and not just do it via all the social media pieces and to be doing it on the platform related to the show. Exactly. It's a great idea. Um, yeah. My question around this though, this is, this is kind of cool is, so let's say I'm a listener to the Thrive Loud podcast and we have our listeners out there and they want to know 
are they subscribing to a service or is the podcast host subscribing to Listen app? Uh, that's a great question. No, uh, so it works just like any other app. I mean, everything is free. You just find the shows that you want to follow and listen to and you subscribe to them just like you would on your Apple app or whatever other app. So there's no you know, extra layers of friction. Gotcha. So you are creating an open community around yes. the podcast and enabling people to connect faster. Yes. I'm loving this so, more and more, Paul. It's totally rocking and rolling. So you're- Yeah, and all, we, we essentially have all of the shows that you'll find on iTunes. So it's, it's the complete open. We're not gatekeeping like what shows can or cannot be on there. Like if it's on an open RSS and in the podcast ecosystem, it's part of the Listen app. Paul, help our listeners understand this. Where do you want to go with this community? Oh man, this is this is so exciting to me because I think um, the world needs a better place for having discussions and connecting and conversations at scale. Um, the world just needs a better place to do that. Like we have a few places where we can do that via social, you know, networks, um, you know, Twitter, Reddit, etc. Um, there's a lot of toxicity in those places. Um, and I am really looking forward to, uh, creating a place where people can interact with each other. And I think podcasting is the perfect ecosystem and kind of environment for this to be born, uh, because it has so many provoking and good topics to, to start discussing. And, um, you know, of course, like there will be toxic people and we're going to have to figure out how to navigate. It's actually, I I was just going to go there. Um, well, actually I was going to say something else that might even be better because look, Those that have to actually speak up and share their voice, there might be some issues around people not wanting to to share that level of transparency to who they are, and some people hide behind the text or the communication they have, although there's an identity to that. You know who's saying what. Um, So in actuality, yeah, you're going to have some stuff that might not be appropriate, uh, but you also might be able to get the real listeners and those who really want to communicate and get their voice out there um, to really leave something impactful. I think that's actually yeah, powerful. Yeah, for sure. And uh, unlike other platforms, um, we are not going the route of anonymity. Like we want people to connect their social platforms, existing ones that we want them to put in their name, their location, uh, for there to be a level of transparency. And like you said, when you're, when you're using your voice, it has your DNA in it. So if yeah. you're going to be nasty, like it's, it's actually harder than it is uh, via text. Text is easy. And you can stay anonymous, but with voice, it's just connected to who you are. And so um, I think there will be less people, less bad players. And the other thing is we already have a system that we'll be building where uh, accounts will have kind of ratings, if you will. And so if you're going to be a bad player, nobody's going to see your content. We're just going to suppress that content so that, you know, the toxic people don't, don't have, you know, a platform for their negativity and and i think honestly with voice though it's just so much fun like <laughs> you 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 get to hear people's voice like instead of reading their comment it's a completely different way of engaging with them and and i think people really enjoy using this i, I could also see a lot of different partnership opportunities which we'll we'll talk about in another time because you and i can chat about this stuff all day yeah. but i actually <laughs> wanted to ask though as the entrepreneur that you are the question i have is you you hinted at the fact that the first time you had done this and built it, you, you had no idea how to, to deal with it because that wasn't your natural innate abilities. Um, but you've been developing content. You've been mapping out a business in a community and coming up with the ideas. Which has been most challenging for you and which is most enjoyable? And I'm talking about running the business of Listen App. Ooh, yeah. Uh, great question. Um I tend to be the type of person who is constantly generating ideas uh, and it's really hard for me <laughs> to um, not pursue all of them. So I think that's been one of my biggest challenges is e- even like with this listen app project, like when it comes to, you know, building features, when do you, you know, say like, this is the experience that needs to be, and we're not going to add anymore. We're not going to do anything. Like we're just going to build this because, you know, a week from now, after I've played with it and thought about it, like I'll think of a way better way to do it. And, uh, and, and the, the greatest challenge is also, you know, in, in, in figuring out like, how do you do social audio? 
there's no other platform that's done it. So there's no like, Hey, this is how, you know, it's worked <laughs> in this place and that place. Like you're completely like out in the deep sea, you know, and it's, it's so much of it's a guessing game and trusting your own intuition of like, this is what feels really good for me. This is how I would want to use it. Um, but when you combine that with my like impulsive nature to constantly be generating ideas of like how it could be better, uh, that's been really hard because then, you know, I have designers and developers that go in and implement a certain, you know, model. And then I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't the best way to do this. And we kind of start over. So that's, you know, we've gone through several iterations, to be honest, before we got to the model that, you know, we have right now that we're, we'll be launching with. Uh, and, and it just took going through those experiences and, 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 and nailing it. But that's, it's, I guess it's like a blessing and a curse in one. Um, but for me personally, that's been one of the biggest challenges. So I want to ask this question because uh, I find this fascinating. I want to peel back the layers of Paul right now. And this is uh, one that we ask on the show often. And that is as an entrepreneur and an innovator and someone that's trying something new, you got good days and bad days. On those bad days, when you have trouble thriving, who or what practice do you seek to get back on the thriving track? I recently started reading a book by Michael Singer, and I'm going to remember the name. Uh, it's called The Untethered Soul. And okay. this has been probably one of the most helpful things in my life Ugh, as of a long time. Um, so it's this idea of centering yourself to pure consciousness uh, because what 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 ends up happening in our minds is we have this voice that's commenting on everything mm -hmm. and and that voice is you know essentially our brains and the way that we're hardwired to solve certain tasks that we set for ourselves and maybe the, the task is you know to be happy in certain contexts or in certain ways and your brain start, tries to figure out how to be happy and then when you're not it starts nagging and complaining and it creates all of these negative you know impressions and negative um, experiences in your heart that that then clog our are thriving, if you will, or experience of life. But like all of that is not at the core of your consciousness of who you are, because you can observe it from a third party, third party perspective. Uh, if you can actually step back from it into your pure consciousness and distance yourself from all of those thoughts and just observe them, it, you get liberated from them and you can let them pass. Oh, I like that. And, and it's just been so amazing because then, then, then you're not personally involved in all those things. You're just you know, this observer that's in this, you know, seat of your consciousness. And uh, it is so liberating. I've, I've actually been enjoying the book so much. I'm almost done with it right now. I would recommend it for everyone. I like that. I like when we get someone who has a specific book that helps them get back on track. That's pretty good. I like it. Paul, I want to do this right now. Let's do the admin part because we have more fun to do on this episode. Um, let's share with the listeners. We're going to put it all in the show notes, but it always sounds better when it comes from you because this is the audio feature of what we need to do. <laughs> we want to focus on the audio. Let the listeners listen to where they can find you, websites, links, the app itself, any special things that they should know, any timings that we should be aware of. Um, we'll put yeah. it on the show notes, but kick it off. Let everyone know where they can find it. Okay, so immediately, I mean, if you want to go to your app store right now, uh, there's an app called Listen App. Uh, if you search in the app store, you'll find it. Um, you can start you know, using our existing app and just kind of playing with it. Uh, approximately a month from now, uh, it will be replaced with version two. If you want early beta access via test flight, if you want to like get in early and it'll be a little bit maybe buggy or whatever, but we're going to have a fun community in there. Um, it's it's uh, Early beta is going to be iOS only. Um, and if you want to participate in that, um, go to listenapp.co and uh, sign up on our homepage for early access. And uh, our, I know our homepage is focus towards podcasters but anybody who signs up there will get early access and um, I will send you a link in about two weeks uh, and then you could download the app the new app and start recording and playing around you could even you know find this show on there and start leaving comments I would love for this community to pioneer uh, maybe even in our in our beta community um, you know comments for Thrive. So that would be a lot of fun. If you want to connect with me personally um, I have a web page that connects kind of everywhere where I write and my social media and that's uh, michaelenko.com and that's spelled just like the name Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L and then Anko, E-N-K-O.com and then uh, my Twitter handle is at michaelenko. 
So, Michael Anko, Mr. Paul Anko, uh, the question I have for you are some standard, we like to call it fun street. We're going to go down the road here of the fun things you like in life and the things that matter a lot to you. Uh, I'm going to go here first, one of the signature questions here on Thrive Loud. Paul, what's your all-time favorite movie? I would have to say Inception. I rewatched it recently again, um, maybe, I don't know, a month ago. And uh, it just, every time, I think it's it's a, like a real work of art. It's just done so well. Uh, and I love the ideas that they explore around, you know, consciousness. What, what, what part of the movie connects the most with you? I think it's this idea that, I mean, the whole idea of like lucid dreaming is just I love it because it's almost like AR, if you will, where mm-hmm. you're in reality, but then you you get to mess with reality and it's all linked to your imagination and, and kind of the, the breadth of your imagination. But uh, what I love is, um, you know, uh, the, the exploring of like the depths of our, you know, experiences and consciousness and how that kind of litters our imagination and our and, and limits our experiences there so it's i mean just how they explore that i'm trying to say it without yeah. giving away the movie to anybody who i, I think it, many of our listeners have seen the movie we, we don't have to worry about spoiler alert here as it relates to Inception. i hope so i hope so i i have two parts of the movie that, that connect with me just that which would probably go in line with that and um one is uh the the young female architect who he brings on and how she so quickly picks things up and she's drawn back immediately into the fact that there's no limits to what she can design and create. And to an innovator like you, I can imagine that connecting with you. Yeah, yeah. And then the other line in the movie that always gets me is, I forgot what part of the Mideast they're in. They go into this room with this very heavy sedated um, thing that makes people dream faster. And there's a whole room mm-hmm. of people. And then mm-hmm. the line that's discussed is they come here to dream every day. And then the, the overseer says, no, they come here to wake up. And it was such a powerful message just about yeah. what's real and what's not. Yeah. And I, I think he even asked there, he says, and who are you to say what's reality? Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that whole concept yeah. is just brilliant. Um, <clears throat> let alone the, the, the movie and the effects in the movie are just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Like you know, that, that hallway scene, you know, when, when the car is rotating and then the hallway. Oh, rotating. my God. And yes. And uh, he's like, right. they actually built a, a whole hallway with rooms and put it in this giant rotator. Like, it's insane the, the efforts they went through to create that scene. Yeah, and it's such a good cast. And you're right. It is very, it, it's rewatchable. And even knowing what happens in the movie and then trying to understand it, you get a different perspective each time. So I'm a big fan of Inception. And, and to someone like you, an idea creator, it's not surprising. Let's, let's, let's continue down Fun Street. You have a music background. And this means that you probably love all different types of music or certain specific genres, maybe. But what I want to know is today, Paul, what is your jam? What is the song that on those days that you're not quite kicking on all cylinders that you listen to and, and it kind of gets you back into gear? Mm. Um, I'll be honest. I go through phases in life. Uh, right now, um, I'm like into German house music, like German <laughs> techno house. It's it's just this like, and I'll work and listen to it. Like it, the there's this minimalism to it that's actually so beautiful because they'll have you know these incredibly complex, even polyphonic rhythms going um, that are just fun in and of themselves, but and, and, and the, the tracks will be long. It's not like a, you know, two minute little quick fixer. Like it just, it like puts you in a state, if you will. Hmm. And then they'll have these melodic tones that will change on top of it. And so they'll have, you know, a lot of like melodramatic, even chord shifts and voice leading. And I mean, it's just, I like once you get into it, there's a whole world there that's really, you know, fantastic. And somehow the Germans just, they're kind of pioneering it, to be honest, and doing it better than everybody else. I'll, I'll say this, Paul. I was very glad to have you on the show today because I'm all about connecting your voice. This show connects my voice and the voice of the listeners. I'm a speaker, so my voice connects. And I even use voices as an acronym in a lot of the messages on how people can better connect. But you're really doing it technically with our voice. And I love that level of interaction and creating community around voice, around this audio, amazing, booming platform podcasting. So continued success to you. We will put all the promotions about 
Listen app out there. And uh, yeah, oh, we'll be doing some demo testing with this platform so our listeners can definitely jump in. And, uh, I'm that really glad awesome. you came on the show today, man. This has been awesome. Thanks so much. For awesome. Coming. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And to all our Thrive Out listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.